<clears throat> well, good evening, everybody, and welcome to Super League Raw Weekly, the whole new Super League Raw Weekly with me tonight, Steph Sale and Greg Nixon. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. Are you well? Very, very well indeed. A fantastic discussion on Sunday night. Catch the final whistle podcast. Uh, not now, of course, later in the week or, or tomorrow morning on the way to work, where we discussed all things round three with the team talk members. Uh, if you want to learn a bit more about what we thought of round three, that's where you're going to need to go. We're going to be doing very high level on round three tonight and more on round number four. Great discussion, though, boys, wasn't it? Yeah, really enjoyed it. Yeah, it's getting getting good and great to see so many of the members getting involved. Um, it's only going to grow from strength to strength. So uh, keep signing up. You know, the membership's growing. So we we'll, we'll love to see it. Absolutely, yeah. The membership is indeed growing. And uh, Greg Broach is fastly getting his own fan club, which is marvellous. Um, <laughs> right, let's get straight to it then. Let's uh, let's start the debate. Like I say very, very high level tonight. Uh, we're going to start with this one. Uh, this was confirmed. Uh, the NRL, Andrew Abdu, uh, last week as part of the Las Vegas extravaganza, confirmed that they would be interested in buying a stake or indeed taking over the Betfred Super League. Uh, Greg? Could it happen? Oh, I do hope so. I really do hope so. Um, I think we talked last week, didn't we, about the farcical, again, not knocking rugby league, the, the farcical situation where we have Super League rules, NRL rules, international rules. I think, Steph, you rightly said, there's one way to, to solve to solve that, and that's for the NRL to, to take over the running of the Super League. For me, now this might be controversial, but I, I can't. I, it can't happen soon enough for me if I'm being... Really honest with you, yeah, good, uh, Steph. Yes, absolutely. I mean, going going to the uh, the Vegas game, looking at the marketing of that and the way it was produced, the whole show and everything, it's just a different level. Um, how, how they do it, it's crying out for it. Our sport over here, not you know, not just the rules, but just to, you know for the, the interest in the game and IMG. Oh, it just ticks every box for me, and they've got the money to do it, which is the the other thing. And if we want to compete with Australia, going on salary caps and stuff like that, they're the ones yeah. who are going to inject the the money into the game um, along with the marketing. So, like like Reggie says, it can't come soon enough for me. No, no, it can't. Uh, this is an interesting point. Uh, Stuart Minnis, uh, good evening to you. Uh, he says that we should play a state of origin match at Wembley. That would, would well, it be a sellout, quite frankly. Oh, God. I'd, I'd be queuing up there now. If yeah, that was yeah. Announced. yeah, it would, yeah. It would be absolutely amazing. Yeah, uh, Sean Alan Spencer idea. is with us this evening saying good evening. Looking forward to his trip up to all on Thursday. Sean is soon to become a new member, I believe, of Super League Raw. Uh, at least he will be when I see him next. Uh, but that's another story. Uh, Right, let's keep the uh, let's keep the pace going, gentlemen. Um, where should we go next? This was heartwarming to see. Harry Sunderland Award update. I don't know if you saw this. Um, it's been announced that there will be a ceremony at the grand final this year to retire the Harry Sunderland, where past players, past winners, and their families will be invited to attend the grand final. They're talking about a dinner as well. And this was a nice touch as well. The 52 past winners will be engraved on the new trophy with the old trophy going to Rugby League HQ. Um, nice touch. And it's the right way to say goodbye to what has been a prestigious award, Steph. Yeah, I mean, that's I, had, I hadn't heard that story. And that's really, really nice way of things. I know it caused a bit of, uh, you know, put the Rob Burrow. I mean, we all know Rob Burrow should be, you know, award have an award for something and i know it caused a bit of thing but i think that's a nice way the rfl have have seen some sense with it and you know it's a great way to retire that trophy yeah greg yeah. Uh, did you did you see this one mate i, I just caught i caught it just as we were coming on air yeah, yeah. um I, I think uh yeah i think that's a lovely touch I, I like what they do before the aussie grand final where they bring out the players who are retiring that yeah. season as well and I, I think we should do something like that too yeah. Um, but yeah, I think I think that's a, that's a nice touch um, to to say to Ra to the old fella. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Nobody uh, paid their respects more to the retiring heroes than Super League Raw did last year. Brought a tear to <laughs> many a person's eye, that one. Oh, there was a dry um, eye in the house. Not a dry eye in the house. I'm a bit of meatloaf on a Tuesday night. <laughs> Go on, lad. Uh, right, well, let, let's stay positive. Well done to the refs and the match review panel. Uh, a much improved round three. Uh, we touched on this slightly, but we didn't go into too much detail 
on the Final Whistle podcast. Uh, the match review panel, of course, have sat since then. And Greg, I'll come back to you first on this one. Great to see that no, you know, it, they've been sensible, the match review panel, as well as the referees who I felt pretty much yeah. in every game officiated well, mate. Uh, yeah, I think we, we said in the podcast, um, the refs need to take a big rap this weekend. There was only one, maybe two strange decisions. But yeah, the match review panel. Uh, is it right that they haven't sat tonight? Because all players nope. have accepted the guilty verdicts. Yeah, they've all, oh, they've yeah, all accepted it. Common sense on both sides there, I think, really. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, yeah no, nice no. to see that. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you'll know the complaints I've got with the refs this weekend. But apart from that, then I think they were all all really, really good. And I think um, I saw somewhere that out of the, the ones that were um, reviewed to match review panel would have been reviewed last season as well. So there's no controversial ones uh, this this week. So that that was good to see. Absolutely, really, really good to see. And I say you, it's just a lot of a lot of really, really good point. A uh, really, really good officiate. And I thought Chris Kendall, two hundred games now for Chris Kendall in Super League. And you know that that moment in the Leeds Catalan game where you know he kept his car, he kept the cards in the pocket. He had a sensible chat with him, let him get on with the game, and there was a, a lovely ripple of applause from the fans. And I think that says it all, really, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, and there's a good question for Stuart there in the chat. Have you seen it? Which player won. has won the won the Harry Sunderland Trophy the most? That's a good question. Be a Leeds player, I bet, won't it? There's a lot that's done it twice. I know Andy Andy Fowles done it twice. I think Rob Burrow's done it twice. Sinfield, uh, I'd have said. Sinfield not won it a few times. Sinfield's won it twice, I think. Uh, Roby, is it Roby? Remember, it also goes back to the old Premiership final as well. It does it does? Chris, so did Chris join win it a couple of times as well? I'm going to say I'm going to say something like Andy Gregory. Oh no, I don't think it was Gregory. Sean maybe. Long, I bet's had a few. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I think I know again James Rob. I think there's a lot that's done too. I know. I know. Yeah. I know. There's a lot that's done too. But you know, go on, Stu. Uh, put it in there, mate. I've got a lot. I think I've mentioned quite a few there that I think were twos. Um, so but, Edwards yeah. might be in there with a shout. No, I don't think it was Edwards either. Uh, a lot of twos. If there's a third, if there's one that's won it three times, fair play. Uh, you know, I let would. us know in the chat. But great, great question. Uh, and actually, go on then. Do you know what? We, we roll with the punches here on Super League Raw, don't we? So while Stuart has asked us a question, here it is. Hot off the press, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I said that I'd announce it. I am announcing it. The first Super League Raw quiz night. Get it in the diary. Monday, the 15th of April, 2024. Start at 7.30pm. Everyone will be welcome to the first one. This, going forward, after April, will be exclusive to Super League Raw members only. Uh, six again and Team Talk members. However, just because we can, the first one, we're going to let everybody sample what a great night this is going to be. It's going to be interactive. You're going to play on your phone. There will be a leaderboard on your screen, uh, on, on the on the screen in terms of Zoom. There'll be video clips to watch, what happened next, all that usual stuff. Very question of sport like. The question is, do you think you know your rugby league? Join us Monday, the 15th of April at 7.30pm for a bit of a laugh, a giggle, and there will be a prize for the winner. And who knows, we may even buy a wooden spoon for the person who comes last on. On that. Hello. Hello. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, gentlemen, I can uh, pretty much take it as read that you'll be in attendance for that one. Oh, keep me absolutely. away. Absolutely. Yes. That's going to be great fun. And there'll be a that lot of people. has got my name written all over it. I know. I've already got <laughs> Wooden spoon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Maybe. Uh, there'll be a lot of people who'll be wondering who's won the free £25 gift vouchers. Stay with us. We'll be announcing that a little bit later on in the show right okay uh they're the they're the main news stories i think over and above round three so before we start talking around about round three let's take a look at who the top performers were in the round here they come here are the top performers for round number three the top try scorer was liam marshall with a brilliantly taken hat trick against the huddersfield giant ash handley akeem Maloudi, and Matty ashton also got two the most try assists went to matt Dufty. Jack Campagnolo, Adam Clune and Jake Wardle each setting up their teammates twice. The top metre maker was also Matt Dufty with 231 metres. In second place, Robbie Storey with 190. Then it was Tommy Makerton of St. Helens with 169 and Petter Hicku with 167. Top tackle buster in Super League this week was Harry Newman with an impressive 14 against the Catalan Dragons. Jake Pulis got 11, Tom Briscoe 10 and Jack Walker 9. 
the most clean breaks this week with three apiece went to Liam Marshall, Matty Ashton and Innes Senior of the Castleford Tigers. The most offloads both came from Hull FC with Carlos Tumavari with five and Ligi Sao with four. The top hard meter makers you've got to play in the prop. Seth will row a loose ball for this one and it goes to Callum Watkins of Salford Red Devils 141 meters this week. He was followed by Ligi Sao with 135. Ellie El Zakem with 125 of the Casper Tigers and Morgan Knowles 123. The top tackler in Super League and he's been there year in, year out. Danny Houghton of LFC with 58. In second, Liam Horn with 53. Liggy Sow again with 48. Cameron Smith with 48. And Leroy Kujo with 46. And finally, the top goal kickers both with five apiece was Harry Smith, the Wiggy Warriors, and Stephen Ratchford of the Warrington Wolves. Mark Steed and Darnell McIntosh both with four. Those were your top performers from round number three. So there you go, the top performance round number three. Some great performance in there. Just bear those in mind as we're, we're having a chat uh, through through some high-level stuff where round three is concerned. I'm going to start with yourself, Greg. Catalan Dragons went back to France last week, came back, of course, to play the Leeds Rhinos. Did it bite them? Yeah, I think it did. I can understand why, because the weather was shocking here last week. I can understand why they want to go, not this in the great British weather, but to get some, some sun on the backs. But I, I think it did. And um, they just look lethargic. They look tired. Um, they, 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 they kind of weren't at the races. I, I, yeah, I, I'd say going back and f those flights have taken it. I'm not, you're not flying from Australia, obviously. It's only a couple of hours away. But, you know, it's. I, I think it did. I, I think it, it, it. they should have stayed over here and, and got a facility to train it over here. Yeah, it was um, it was too little, too late. Second half, they were they were decent, uh, Steph, but they yeah. just didn't look the same the same as they had in the first two rounds. But I think all credit has, has got to go to the Leeds Rhinos. It was a an impressive win from them, and that man Harry Newman, um, sensational on the day. Yeah, absolutely. I was the, the point I was just going to make is exactly that, Dave. I thought Leeds, you know, you've got to give credit to Leeds because I think it, pretty much everyone. Um, had Catalan winning this one, um, but um, <laughs> uh, but no, I thought, thought New Newman definitely got. He, he was on the on the edge. I think I said in the podcast, he was he was on the edge in this game, but um, he definitely got the team fired up, and you know they got the job done, and that's all credit to to Leeds. Yeah, spot on. Good evening to Lee Partington, our latest member here at Super League Raw. Saw him in the uh, WhatsApp group as well last night. Great to have Lee with us. Joel Scholes, as always, is with us. Joel will be back next week uh, on Super League Raw week. Uh, and, and Joel's is suggesting that AD Gardner's got, I think. And I think Joel, I think Joel has had far too many uh, brew dogs, mate. I don't <laughs> think that's the case. I think he's having a bit of a giggle there, mate. Quite frankly, Stuart, Stuart's teasing us. He's, he's I think he is. He's, he's, he's not come back. He's asked he's a question. He's gone research yeah. it. He's going to come back in a minute <laughs> with the answer. <laughs> Just to let you know, Stu, in the quiz, you will have 10 seconds to answer. There'll be no Googling, my friend. It's not in the Super League Raw quiz when that comes around. Oh, well, that's, that's me definitely with a wooden spoon and we can't Google. That's absolutely. Right, uh, another another one for me. Um, Hulk AR, you know, a lot of people giving them a lot of plaudits in the first two rounds. I said that I had them at seventh, um, you know, so I don't want to be seen too biased on this. I had real question marks over their pack. Went to Salford this week. Mark Sneed just doing what Mark Sneed does. Um, did we see that they're not at the top table at this moment in time? Will okay, KR that you know a lot of people were talking maybe second, maybe third. Steph will come to you first this time. Yeah, I, I, the opinion I, I, people need to reassess all okay, KR. Well, I, I, I had him third, I think. Um, I hadn't ranked that highly because of the squad they've assembled. I think there's quality all over that team. I think. Like, like we've said a few times now, it's round three, you know, and there's only so long we can keep saying that, but I still think they're gelling as a side, um, you know, and um, I think give, give them a few more weeks, when the, uh, especially when the track dries up a bit as well, I think that'll, that'll def definitely go in their, their favour. Absolutely. Greg Roach trying to wind me and Greg up saying there's a two-for-one offer at the Wolves shot, not at all. That's just got my... This one's got my initials on it, mate. Absolutely, yes. Absolutely, so, no, no, no. I, I, no, I thought I thought Salford played well. I thought they played yeah. really, really well. Salford, um, yeah. you know, Mark Mark Sneed. For me, Mark Sneed is a, an incredibly underrated player. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you put him in a Wigan team, you put him in a Saints team, you put him in a Leeds team, and and we're talking 
you know, he'd get a lot more plaudits than than he does at the moment. Um, I just, I just think it was one of those days for Hull KR. Yeah, I, I, you know, I, I think they're a decent side. I think I've got them in the top six. Um, I think probably this is the first game where they've they might have missed Jordan Abdul a little bit. He started off like house on fire, mate. The first 20 yeah. minutes, Abdul was controlling the game and then all of a sudden Leeds came into it, didn't they? Yeah, yeah, but now no, I'm up the whole KR. I, th I think that, you know... Oh, Abdul. That, oh, obviously, yeah. yeah. Sorry. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's yeah, the perfect, yeah. perfect yeah. game for, for... That was a perfect game for Abdul, yeah. if you like. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, but remember no, last year at Craven Park, Abdul kicked them off the park, didn't he, if you remember? Yeah. yeah. That that might well have been... That might well have been... The, a case of of they needed that little bit of injection in there, something a little bit different. Yeah. But no, I, I think Hull KR will be okay. I think um, I think that's I, where. Sorry, Reg. I think that's where the, where, the, where, the, where the where the tracks dry up. I think that's where it's going to benefit Hull KR because Tyro May he, he didn't really do much in this game. He was quite, you know, mm -hmm. the, well, you know, obviously he's used to playing in the south of France. Um, so it's one of those where I think as the season goes on, he'll come more into it as the tracks dry up. So the, yeah. the boys at League Express won't be happy with you dissing Tyro May, the player that should be topping the uh, the charts after two rounds. How dare you, Stephanie? How dare you, sir? Stephanie? <laughs> yeah, if he was going to make a comment like that, he becomes Stephanie. <laughs> That's the second time you've misgendered me from the very first time I came on this show. Oh, well, yeah. Oh, no, oh, that, no. that was that was my fault. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do yeah happy it. days. Hey, memories, Steph. Memories. You've never held it against me. Right, gentlemen, I want to show you this. If if I may, I'm just going to take that off uh, so we can see. This is the league table after three rounds of Super League. Saints, of course, sitting pretty. It, it looks very them and us. Uh, you know, if you look at the bottom there, Broncos, Tigers, Leopards, all on there. Of course, the Leopards have only played two. FC off the, off the running with, with, with two. But, you know, as you look at that, Leopards, Tigers, Broncos, it isn't really them and us, is it? I mean, you know, you look at the Broncos, they've been progressively getting better, very unlucky at the weekend. I think the Tigers have been competitive throughout. The Leopards um, equally have been competitive throughout, as of all, as of the Giants. I mean, you know, some people might look at that league table and say, oh, here we go again. But actually, you know, we have seen from those teams in the lower echelons there this season thus far that, that they are going to give a good fist of it, aren't they? Absolutely. You know, and I think I was three minutes away from calling the London result right, you know, yeah. Um, yeah. What, 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 a, what an effort that was by them. So, I mean, that's that's a great sign of, of, of things to come. And it's, it is so competitive at the moment. Um, long may that continue. And hopefully there'll be a lot more tight games as the season goes on. Just so yeah. that, obviously, the podcast can't hear it, but Joel is pulling uh, names out of the hat. He's now gone for Liam Fowell. Keep trying there, Joel. I think he's only 1-1. Uh, one, one. Um, Reggie, over to you. <laughs> yeah, I was, and it was good to see some, you know, a couple of London players in in your perform, top performers of the week. Um, they, they they suffered a couple of, of of injuries, I think, at the weekend, which might hamper them. Yeah. Um, which, which they can do without because I think they've not got the biggest squad, and I, and I think that will be the the greatest challenge. Um, the the squad depth this season. They've got they've got a decent first seventeen. After yeah. that, you know, it is a bit paper thin. So, yeah, we'll see. We'll see as the season progresses. Uh, Stuart uh, has come back to us saying that there have been no clear, uh, Avi Sunderland, no clear winners, few winners, three wins, Simfield and Maguire. I don't think so, Stu. Go back and check that. I think it's one two, my friend. So I don't think anyone's won it more than twice. Yeah, no, they haven't. I think I think Dawn's right. Dawn, I think Dawn's Dawn Baker, our friend. Our, let's be fair, our member, of course, Dawn. No one's won Harry Sunderland more than twice. I'm in agreement with Dawn. I don't think Sinfield or Maguire have won it more than twice. Uh, but if I'm wrong, Stuart, I'll say I'm wrong, but I just don't think I will be uh, on this occasion. Uh, right, gentlemen, uh, more you know, lots to get through this evening. Let's now jump to February. We didn't do this last week. It caught me a bit off guard. Who'd have believed it? We're already in March. We uh, we failed to, to nominate our coach, team and player of the month last week. Normally we do that in advance. We didn't last week, so apologies for that. But hey, we're back. Here we go. So the short list, of course, for coach of the month was Paul Wellens. Yep. Steve McNamara and Willie Peters, all three. Now, before you Wigan Warriors fans start screaming, but Matt Pete will won the World Cup Championship. This is Super League Raw. We only judge Super League. So we don't include uh, you know, um, 
players that have played in World Cup Championships and Challenge Cups in our team of the week or anything like that, which just solely on the competition of Super League. Had it been uh, the case that we did include the World Cup Challenge, of course, Matt Pete would have won it, but we don't include it. So the three nominees, Paul Wellens, Willie Peters and Steve McNamara. Steph, who would you have gone for in those three? I think it's got to be Wellens, hasn't it? The only unbeaten ones next to Wigan. Greg? Yeah, Wellens. And uh, you'll both be absolutely correct. Paul Wellens gets the February Super League Raw Coach of the Month. Played two, won two, a magnificent, magnificent 68 <laughs> points. Maleficent? Where's Maleficent? Maleficent. <laughs> Maleficent. Uh, magnificent 68 points scored and only four conceded. And that, for me, was the key thing. Four conceded. I think he, I think we, you know, it'd be hard push to say that Willie Peters didn't have the harder fixture list, the two that he he had. But you know, in rugby league, to keep two teams to four points in, you know, um 160 minutes of rugby league, that's impressive, isn't it? Yeah, I, I referenced that I think on last week's show you, yeah, when, yeah. with the Huddersfield game. The, the Saints, we all know Saints for their attacking prowess. The defence in that game was phenomenal, and I think now if you go into round three, which wasn't included in that, they've only conceded five in total because we only got one against them. So you know it's phenomenal defence from St. Helens. Which is Tell you what, not being funny, folks, but, uh, you know, prowess and phenomenal in the same sentence, only on Super League Raw. Absolutely wonderful stuff. And Maleficent right? as well. And Maleficent as well. Outstanding. Um, yes, OK. Uh, yourself, Greg, agree with, with Mr. Wellens? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Defensively superb. Um, and, you know, especially after the... <laughs> I've just seen Callum's. Let it go, Callum. Yeah, let it go, Callum. <laughs> Callum saying Frozen on Sunday night, Maleficent on Tuesday. Hey, we like our Disney here on Super League Raw. Carry on, Greg. Carry on. <laughs> yeah, let it go now. Um, <laughs> Love yeah, is an open uh, door, sir. Walk no. through it. Go on. <laughs> I'm getting all tangled now. Oh, um, no. You change films. Just go on. Carry on. <laughs> 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 I can't think of any more Disney films. No. Um, yeah, talking of Disney films, yeah, well, has, uh, has, has done a fantastic job. He took a lot of pelters early doors last season, um, despite winning the, the World Club Championship. So I, I'm quite I'm quite pleased with him, actually, because he did take a lot of stick from Saints fans early doors last season. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm quite happy with that. that he result. was a bit of a dumbo. Oh, he's going again, isn't he? He's going again. Unbelievable. Hey, unbelievable. Right. Uh, so, yeah, everybody's in agreement with Paul Wellens, and, and rightly so. Right, folks, we're now going to announce the team of February. And, of course, one of these players, one of the 1-13 to 13 players, will be announced later in the show as the Super League Raw Player of the Month for February. But, gentlemen, should we see who made the running? Should we have a look at the team of the month for February? Cannot yeah, wait. let's do it. Let's do Here it. it comes. So there it is, the team of February. For those who are listening on the podcast, I'll go for it for you. Fullback Jack Wells, beyond the wings, Tommy Makinson and Ash Handley. In the centres, Nene McDonald and Essen Masters of Huddersfield Giants. Uh, standoff Mikey Lewis, scrum half Jordan Abdul. Who'd have thought they were in the same team last year? Uh, yeah. Forwards, Chris Satai and Paul Vaughan, hooker Dowell Clark. In the second row, Matt Whitley of St. Helens, Tarek Sims of the Catalan Dragons, loose forward Elliot Minchella. New for this year, we do have four interchange. Changes. Number 14 will be Curtis Sivinen, 15 Jai Whitbread, 16 Jez Litton and 17 Sam Stone. That is the team of the month for February, gentlemen. Uh, happy with that one? Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. It's okay? Yeah. I, 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 you're I not all, yeah, I think they're all, <clears throat> all been outstanding performers there. I don't think, I can't think of anyone else off the top of my head who would put in. No, no. It, I mean, absolutely yeah, outstanding yeah. performances over the first. And remember, folks, you know, we, we look at all the stats uh, as well as, you know, what the eye has seen. Every game has been watched uh, all 80 minutes. We don't leave anything to chance. Uh, very comfortable with these. Of course, it's there to be shot at. Uh, but that is the team of the month of February. And one of those 1-13 to 13, at the end of the show, we will announce as the player of the month of February. Who would you give it to? Get in the chat. We'll give you a couple of shout outs as the show goes on. Who was your player of the month in the first Two rounds, let us know. Right, outstanding stuff. We now go to 
The Super League Raw Fantasy Mini League. Oh, yes. Here it is yet again. Uh, big, big week once more for Darren Chadwick. Derek, Darren's not a member. Oh, no. And he's got until close of business tomorrow to register as a member. He's Come on, Darren. He's got one hand on a season ticket for next year as Darren. And he's not a member yet. Oh, dear. Which means that Ryan Birch, who is in second place, he's giggling. He's having a right good giggle to himself. Is he going to be allowed to get that season ticket with somebody going to knock him down this year. Darren, at the moment, you're in line for a non-member replica shirt for next year, so you're still going to come away with something. Uh, Ryan, at the moment, has his hand on a season ticket, and as announced last week, with each new sponsor, that's right, we've got a new sponsor, the Final Whistle podcast will be sponsored from next week, so we've now added a second prize for the membership. The member finishing second in the Fantasy Mini League will also get a replica shirt. Join today, the pin number 7434, Fantastic. password 819007, so the pin 7434, password 819007, We'll keep adding prizes to that as the season goes on and we get more sponsors. Uh, go get yourself over to the Super League, official Super League Fantasy League. Get your team, get that pin number, join our league. You've got until midnight on Thursday. That means end of Wednesday night, Thursday morning, midnight. That is when the cutoff will take place. A download will be taken and only members who have joined on that day will be eligible for the season ticket. So uh, you really do need to be getting yourself into that. Big, big, our biggest one thus far. Win that season ticket. Get involved with the Fantasy League. It's all right, gentlemen, isn't it? It's all right. It is. That's another wooden spoon coming my way, I think. Well, well possibly. Uh, just quickly going back into the Lee Leopards. Uh, it has been announced that Tom Briscoe and uh, John Asiata have torn the calves. Uh, we're looking at, uh, I think it's said something like four to six weeks, Steph, on yeah. top of the Edwin Pape piece. Um, you know... Massive blow for, for Lee. Just just want to get your take on it, uh, Greg and, and Steph. Lee had it pretty straightforward last year in terms of injuries. At the back end of the season, they started to bite. These are serious players that are missing now. Uh, is this next six to eight weeks going to define their chances of getting in the playoffs, do we think? Is that, is that to me or to Steph? Yeah, I'll go with you first. I'll bring Steph in last. Uh, um, I d- I've... Yeah, I don't I can't don't know with that one because you know we've seen lots of teams struggle with injuries over the first few months of Super League, get the players back, and they've had a real strong finish to the season. So I don't think it's season defining. Right. I, th- I think it and I think it's it's better that, that Lee have got these injuries at, at this point. If they're gonna get them, get them at this point in the season, it might well impact on their defence of the challenge cup. I would have thought, mm-hmm. but if if these players come back and they can get they can get close to something to the the point where they were last season, I, I still think Lee will do okay. I don't think at this moment in time, three or four weeks in, it's season defining. Uh, but I, I think you know they need to get the injuries back as soon as they possibly can. Yeah, Is yeah, that, uh, yeah. I think I think you're right. I think I mean. People say we didn't get injuries, but that's towards the back end where the playoffs, when it actually matters, is when we lost Hardacre, we lost Asiata, you know, yeah. then uh, Latelli. Um, so I'd, I'd rather them be injured now than, than later on in the season. So in, in that respect, yeah, it's not, it's not ideal. But, you know, all those players pretty much didn't play against St. Helens. You know, Asiata um, never really played in that game. We only lost them by one time. <coughs> You know, even with the squad players that can still compete with with those types of teams, um, I think I think if we can pick up a few <laughs> over the next three or four weeks, then then we should have a chance. But if we go completely defeated, sorry, defeated for the next six weeks, then we may struggle. But Leeds is a massive game on Friday. Well, Dawn Baker, there giving you a bit of love. Uh, Steph, better to get them earlier than at the back end. Uh, so there you go. Uh, Paul Francis, if you want to, Paul, uh, get yourself over to the Final Whistle podcast. We discussed that on Sunday night, the incident at the end of the game between St. Helens and the Lee Leopards. Get yourself over to the Final Whistle podcast in, on the way into work tomorrow and see what we had to say about that. All right, let's bring uh, round three swiftly to a close. Um, right, okay. Right, let's do it. Um the Albert Goldthorpe uh, and Sydney <laughs> Raw. So Warrington, Warrington against Castleford. Uh, no Man of Steel tonight because they can't be bothered releasing them. Um, but anyway, 
they obviously can't be bothered doing that as well as sitting uh, this evening. So anyway, we move on. Uh, keep your eye out tomorrow. We'll post uh, the Man of Steel points on our Facebook pages when they get announced. Anyway, Warrington, we went three points for Matt Duffy, uh, two for Ben Curry, one for Lachlan Fitzgibbon. A lot of people will be surprised that Hayes was not in there. Uh, Hayes was good, but so too is Fitzgibbon. It was a real toss-up. That said, the Albert Goldthorpe, they have given three to Hayes, which I... No, I didn't see that. No, I, two... I, I thought Hayes had a had a solid game. He did, but he wasn't man of the match, mate. He wasn't man of the match. Uh, Curry, well. Curry <laughs> two, Dufty one. Dufty, Dufty for me, absolutely rinsed. Dufty, uh, I tried two assists, 100, 230 metres plus. Good tackle bus galore. I mean, yeah, Hayes, he did some great tackling. Um, but... Now nah, for me, it, good it, picking it, game, but you know, yeah, I, yeah. you know, I, I'm not going to split hairs with good, you. No, good, no, no. but good. um, big so, reps for Ben Curry, though. I think Ben Curry at loose forward has phenomenal. revitalized Ben phenomenal. Curry. And I know what a lot of Warrington fans have said for a few years that he is a loose forward, not a second row. And I, and I think that's that's proving correct at this moment in time. And it's going to give uh, Sam Burgess a headache when I know Crowther's in the squad this week. Matty Nicholson uh, to come back as well. Yeah, Matty Nicholson, and and you know that that's a great headache to have if you're Sam yeah. Burgess. But I, if I if I'm Sam Burgess, I'm keeping Ben Curry at loose forward because he has recaptured um, the, some of the form he had before his injuries. Yeah, yeah. Best game. And there's Kev Wall. Good evening, Kev. Kev on YouTube. Ben Curry's best game for a long time for me yeah. for three years, Kev. I would say. For three yeah. years. Right, let's go to the Saints League game. Uh, we gave three points for Dodd. Brilliant performance from Doddy. Outstanding. Yeah. Two for Wellsby, one for James Bell. The Albert Goldthorpe has gone the same as Sky Whitley. I know, Greg, you thought so that the same yeah, way. Uh, yeah, I did. Whitley, two for Bell, one for Moylan. You mentioned Moylan on Sunday, as, and he did. He had a great game. They gave a point to Moylan, Steph. Yeah, um, I think I think Moylan deserved uh, a point. In such a close game, I think at least one of the league players deserved to be um, be on it, and I'm, I'm glad they've given him one point. But it's interesting with Whitley; he's actually top of the fantasy league points. I think. Yeah, yeah, no, he's doing very well in the fantasy league. Just ask yeah. Ryan Birch; he'll tell you that he's he's all things uh, fantasy league. And yeah, Ryan, um, Wigan Huddersfield, gentlemen, uh, we went three for Marshall hat trick, happy days. Two for Thompson uh, on his return, and one for Elliot. Uh, one for Ellis. I think um, he's been outstanding at, at, at Kane Ellis at loose forward. I, I didn't see that at the start of the year, but he's done really well. Albert yep. Goldthorpe, three for Marshall, two for Ellis, and they gave one to Essen Masters, who again brilliant offload for the try, great running. Yeah. Any issues with that, gents? No, I think Masters has been been a revelation. I'll just feel yeah. I mean, I saw him first hand in the first round, and. You know, I was so impressed. I think he got man of the match in that game, didn't he? Um, so, yeah, great, great to see him getting another point there. Yeah, yeah Lee, Lee Partington just basking in his team's glory. Got the job done, nothing too fancy. Must be hard. I bet, I bet those diamond shoes are really hurting you tonight, Lee. Uh, right, Reggie, <laughs> go on, mate. What's your thoughts? <laughs> no, I agree. Quite, quite agree. <laughs> I've just been dazzled by that comment, Dave. There's nothing more I can say. Absolutely. Sparkling, wasn't it? Uh, Ryan Birch, um, big sc big scorer, Whitley and Darrell Clark. There you go. All things Fantasy League. There's our Ryan. Right, Leeds. Well, let's have a bit of fun now. This is where the goal fought really kick in. Um, so we went three for Harry Newman. Yeah. Two yeah. for Ash Manley. Another consistent performance from Ash. And one for Chris Satay because I thought second half, Everything that was good about Catalan getting back on the front foot came from Chris. That guy was monstrous. He was incredible, mate. Absolutely Playable incredible. Almost. Right. Albert Goldthorpe. Three for Brody Croft. Two for Ash Handley, the same as us. Now, I know what you're thinking. Number How one. Has to be, oh, no. Mikel <laughs> Gudemont. Mikel Gudemont gets a point, Greg, at the Albert Goldthorpe. Well, they, they, they won't like Newman because of the way he, he was... You know, getting riled up and stuff like that. That was they hated that. They were hated it. Right, mate. He, he, yeah. he was the best player on the park. He was. He was right. James Bentley, to be honest. And this yeah. for me is where the Man of Steel and the goal for it, it just throws it into question. For Newman not to even got a point, anybody who watched that game could see that Harry Newman was outstanding yeah. on the day. Fourteen tackle busts, fourteen in a yeah. game. 
I think no. I think that's where it comes back to. This is a bit of his reputation, especially from last year. And I think that because the rugby league writers and into the you know they're not they're purists and they they don't like anybody who goes against convention. I don't think so. That he's like a marmite character. I think for them. Yeah. Well, Ryan yeah. Birch, uh, well, one of our members, there he is. Uh, Sate was a men's for Catalan, but Newman and Hanley were great too. Greg, you were coming in. I was kind of surprised. We <laughs> no, it was. <laughs> so there's a time lag. I'm in Australia. Um, I was going to say surprised to give it to John Bentley. <laughs> I was being facetious. Uh, James as well. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. John, John, John Bentley's the rugby yeah, union. James Bentley, mate. James Bentley. James Bentley did that. No, he said John. <laughs> anyway, it doesn't matter. Salford, Salford KR. Way? No, it doesn't matter, mate. Salford KR. Uh, you know, three for Max. We went three for Sneed, two for Watkins, one for Lafayette. Now, there has actually been a comment in the chat around Callum Watkins should have been the February team. He wasn't as good as Sims in, in those two games. He was outstanding, though. He really came to the fore this week, uh, Watkins. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. He, he's been steady away in all three rounds, but in the first two, Sims does pick it, pick, uh, you know, with his try scored and, and his hits and all the rest of it. Sims does outweigh Watkins in those first two, but Watkins was a revelation on, on Saturday. Two, we went two for Watkins, one for Tim Lafay, his best game of the season thus far. The goal for it went three for Sneed, two for Lafay, and one for Burra, the hooker, which mm, I'm not so sure about that one, but but hey, oh, we won't split airs. And then finally, just to get the pace going, Hull FC London, what a game. What a game. Uh, we, the, the Sunday games have been absolutely superb the last Outstanding. Two weeks. Absolutely Outstanding. brilliant. Who needs who needs Super Sunday? There's only one Super Sunday. It's rugby league. End oh, of uh, end of conversation. In fact, I'm going to drop the mic on that one. Boom! There you go. Uh, Hull FC against London. Uh, we went three for Morgan Smith, two for James Meadows, who I thought equally was superb in the halves for London, uh, outstanding, and one for Liggy Sow. Uh, played prop in this game, and believe me, his numbers stack up to anything that went on in any other yeah. ground. The Albert yeah. Goldthorpe. Here we go. Three for Matty Russell. He had a good game. He had a he good game. Well, Matty Russell. He had a good game, but he wasn't man of the match. Good game. Simbin, Simbin can got to cost you any points in the goal for, hasn't it? Yeah, I'm sorry, but yeah. Uh, two for Meadows and one for South. So they went exactly the same, but again, nothing for Smith. How can Morgan Smith not score? It wasn't yeah. just his try. It's his all-round game. You know, he set up one of the tries. He, 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 he yeah. was good. Uh, Dawn there. Uh, we won't repeat that, but yes, I agree, Dawn. Uh, Liggy, Liggy Sow and Jack Walker, Callum's saying. Yeah, Jack Walker. I mean, what a brilliant three rounds. I mean, Callum was with us on the Final Whistle podcast, listened to what he had to say, but we were all very complimentary on Jack yeah. Walker thus far this season, weren't we? Yeah. I, yeah, I think we saw that at the back end of last season. Okay, okay, oh, you know, he came in there and he was a bit of a revelation, wasn't he? Uh, I thought the, the London centre had a good, good game as well. Was it Maluda? Yeah, Akeem Maluda, yes. Yeah. Is, he, is he ex Leeds? Oh, I don't know. That's a good question. Not quite sure. Or ex I can't remember. But Kevin Morrison has a good point from. there. Both Wyalone showed up for LFC. They did. They yeah, did. I thought in, Bullet was, was strong. Yeah. He was. That. Made good, some good meters. Matty it's Russell. Good, you know, a lot of people saying that Matty Russell should have had a a, a penalty try given. In, in uh, but you know, X Hall. Yeah, I knew it was either Hall or Leeds. Um, but yeah, a lot of people saying what should there have been a penalty try when Russell was taken out high. You know. Well, it's that all. Been, it doesn't matter now because you know, as far as LFC fans are concerned, they, they got the win. Right, it's that time of the week where Greg settles himself in. It's his favourite three minutes of the week. It's coming up, ladies and gentlemen. It's now time, as always, we've reached that point in the show where we do the Super League Raw team of the week, and this one might just cause people to get into the chat. But hey, we call it straight at Super League Raw. Here it is. Super League Raw Team of the Week is proudly sponsored by the Good Estate Agent. Join the Rugby League community in trusting Stefan and his team when you are buying, letting or selling property. It's the Super League Raw Team of the Week for round number three with the Good Estate Agent 2024. Here we go again and a fullback is Matt Dufty, the wire's number one. Produced a display of quality with tries, assists and the top meters for the round. He speaks our language. Will someone make him that Regimite sandwich? At two, well he may be unlucky for some, but not Liam Marshall. His hat trick against the Giants was his 13th of his career and takes him all the way to the top of the try scoring charts. 
This week in centre, well after his England call up against Tonga, Sean Wayne said Harry was a new man. We're not so sure about that, but one thing is for certain, he was man of the match on Saturday with a try and tackle busts galore. Alongside him will be Hakeem Maloudi of the London Broncos. His contribution throughout the game brought the Broncos to the brink of victory before Wall FC rode off into the sunset with the two points. Unlucky! At five for the third week in a row, there's no budging. Mr Ash Angler, as his name suggests, he turned the fire burning in the Dragons to ashes this week with a tail befitting of St George and on that note he will be knocking on Sean Wayne's door in this form you could hear echoes of Dion Warwick at the MKM Stadium on Sunday as Morgan Smith played the role of heartbreaker to perfection it wasn't just his drive but his smarts throughout the game that gets him out number six this week and speaking of smarts quite simply without Mark Sneed would the Red Devils have caged the Robins we think not whilst he wears glass slippers Mark is no one Cinderella but plays the role of Prince Charming better than Adam Ant. Playing it prop forward is Liggy Sow who produced a bruising display against London on both sides of the ball. Liggy set the example for his teammates with a never say die persona befitting of the eventual result. At nine, it will be Danny Houghton who oh, yet again produced a defensive effort all hookers should aspire to. As always, his work around dummy half was as mature as the manure of the Broncos. At ten, will be the inform Mr Chris Satai all the Catalan Dragons once he entered the arena the Dragons started to gain momentum and his try gave them belief and his great line being rewarded with a pass a second try could have secured the win at 11 this week is James Bell in a brutal and bad tempered affair the Saints needed a player of guile and quality to settle the Saints you could say he was the exorcist of the Leopards with Mike Oldfield providing the backing track Joining him in second row is the ever young Mr. Callum Watkins. His leadership is priceless and Salford and his work rate and metres were as attractive as the late great Marilyn Monroe. And finally, at loose forward, is the hot and spicy performance of Ben Curry. This was his best performance in a white shirt for over three years. Great hands, great feet, powerful runs. Oh, where's Fat Les when you need him? Here is your Super League Raw Team of the Week for round number three. So there it is, the team of the week for round number three. Gentlemen, Greg, come to you. What are your thoughts? Well, Fat Les was a Harry Sunderland winner. <laughs> he was in Stuart Millis's house. <laughs> Les Boyd, he won the Harry Sunderland trophy in 1985. <laughs> Don't tell him I called him Fat Les, though. It'll be oh, messy. Dear. Well, Greg oh, Roach is coming in. He, he, he loves the uh, the Mark Steed. He loves a bit of uh, team of the week, does Greg Roach? Good evening, Greg. Hope you're well, mate. Carry on, Mr. Nixon. Carry on. Oh, I'm glad to see Ben Curry in there. He deserved that. Yeah. Um, uh, Mar uh, Marshall deserves it. Yeah, I think that's a, I think that's that's a good team of the week. I've, I really do. Steph. Yeah, I mean, it's great to see my favourite Chinese dish, uh, chicken satay, uh, there in the prop. Um, so, yeah, and uh, I think seeing the, the London player in there as well was, you know, that's that's a great effort for them this week. So, yeah. it's good to see a player represented from them. Um, Marshall, he's just been unbelievable, hasn't he, um, as well. So, um, yeah, really, really a good team of the week, that. Yeah, no, you're right. It's, it is great. I mean, look, Maloudi, again, I mean, yes, Story got that brilliant, you know, length of the field try, but over the course of the 80 minutes, Maloudi of the two centres was, was yeah. different gravy. Really, really good indeed, uh, which is great. And Dawn Baker, I say nine teams represented. Well, yeah, because we call it straight. We don't have favourites. Yeah. If people deserve to be in the team of the week, we put them in team of the week. We don't do reputation. We do performance. And these 13 players, for me, they perform the best in their respective positions. Like I say, we call it strength. And that's the way it should exactly. be. Exactly. I think exactly. I will say as well, how, how blessed are we in Super League with 13s at the minute? Oh, incredible. And and, and full-backs. And yeah. full-backs and centres and yeah. second rows. I mean, there's some real quality talent on the field this year, isn't there? There really yeah. is. Yeah. yeah. I think we had this discussion on Sunday night, didn't we, about yeah. um, loose forwards. Yeah. You know, You've got Minchella, Asiata, um, Cameron you know, Smith. Smith. You know, it's, it just goes on, doesn't it? You know, and long may that continue. Long may that continue. The greatest game on earth just continues to get better 
I'm better as the Super League Raw, of course. Uh, quiz nights on the way. Oh, it's just hey, it's just getting better and better all the time, isn't it? Hey, who wouldn't be a member? Anyway, moving on. Uh, let's uh, let's now get a quick word from our sponsor as we look forward to round number four. Let me add a little bit of spice. Yes, thanks again to our sponsors, uh, Rugby League Three Quarters, the online community. If you like your bets, you like to, uh, you know, discuss the odds and hackers and all the rest of it. I don't even know what I'm talking about. But if you're into that type of thing, get yourself over to Rugby League Three Quarters and enjoy a bit of friendly banter with like-minded people. Right, the round four fixtures. Here they are, starting on Thursday with the Robins taking on the Wolves. Then it's Saints against the Red Devils. The Tigers entertain the Giants. The Leopards go up against the Rhinos. The Broncos go up against the Warriors and finally it will be the Dragons who take on Hull FC a really tasty lineup there of games this weekend we're looking forward to each and every one of those gentlemen aren't we oh yes as ever as ever yeah. absolutely yeah, really yeah. well we put a we put a poll out uh, we put a poll out what what was t you know what was going to be the game of the week which was game of the week and uh, the the majority of fans forum polled that the top game the robins and the wolves was going to be this week's game of the week So the game of the week will be uploaded. Uh, the full analysis show will be uploaded on Thursday morning, well before the kickoff at eight o'clock. Make sure that you catch that on all of our social media channels, Twitter, uh, YouTube, and of course, Facebook before the game. Uh, deep dive the analysis for this one. But here we go. This is it. Thursday, head to head. Uh, last season, fourth, of course, and sixth, respectively. Uh, but it was good news for the Wire. They did the double overhaul KR last year. Uh, if you remember in round four, uh, Warrington went to OKR, okay, really good game, 18 points to 10. That was the game where Frankie Holton, I think, had a belter against us, Greg, if you remember. Yeah, uh, yeah, and then did. round 12 uh, at Halliwell, 21-14. But believe you me, at half time, OKR okay, were without doubt the team in form. If I remember, I think somebody, I think it might be Matt Parcell got a yellow card and the game turned at the Halliwell Jones. Right. He did, yeah. Right. Current league positions uh, Warrington third, uh, OKR okay, fifth. The game odds, 8-15 to 15, uh, on our Hull KR, 8-5 to five, the wire. Of course, Hull KR, two wins and a loss, Warrington a loss and two wins. And, uh, yeah, the players that I've just pointed out there on the graphic, we'll probably look at these in a bit more detail as part of game of the week. P Petter Hiku, who's had a mixed fortune in his, uh, you know, since coming back uh, to, to England, uh, in undoubted quality, but he has cost his team uh, in the last two games by, of course, being shown the yellow card and Leon Hayes. I mean, Leon Hayes against Mikey Lewis, that in itself, two young British halfbacks. It's going to be yeah. fantastic to, to see that uh, this <laughs> week. Before you come in, just uh, to confirm, the Robins appear to be going into this full strength. George Williams is back in the 21-man squad of Warrington, whether he plays or not is another issue. Jordy Crowver, as Greg said a moment ago, he's back as well in contention. No drink water, no wrench, no Ty, no Nicholson, no Thomas. Uh, so that's how they come into it. Uh, Greg, as it's Warrington, we'll, we'll start with you. This should be a belting game. Hopefully the pitch is a bit better than it was when Leeds went to town and hopefully yeah. a really entertaining kickstart to round number four, mate. Yeah, uh, do you know what? I, 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 this is one of those games that I've been to and fro in with. Uh, Hulk are a full strength. We've got a, a couple of players out, but I'm hoping, I'm hoping that, that George Williams is back to full fitness. And I'm hoping that Sam Burgess plays Williams and Hayes together. Um, and that's why I've gone for a wire win. One to eight. I think it'd be close. And, and this isn't heart over head. I think the two performances, the last two performances for wire, they've been real. They've, they've ground out wins. They've, they've, they've kind of, they've soaked up a lot of pressure and then they've come away with the game at the end of it. Yeah, the first the first home game, they had a, a dodgy red card. But Castleford played really well for the first 20 minutes and, and Wyatt 
adapted to what was being thrown at them. I've, I've not seen a Warrington team do that for a long, long time. Um, and as Kev says, if Williams doesn't play, it has to be Ratchford, and that's where my prediction might go. But then we get Ratchford. Oh, no, hang, hang, oh, hang on, can I just... Hang on, let me finish. Go then on. we get the kicking from Ratchford. No, so, no. I, that wasn't where I was going. Oh, Don't well. be surprised if you put Sam Powell in the house, man. Well, he might do. He, he he very well might do. And if he does that, then again, I'll, I'll go for a wire win because um, I think I think Sam Powell controls the game really well. I know Stephen say, I know Steve says he fears the Wolves will get a hide. And I, and I, I kind of, a couple of weeks ago when I looked at this, I thought, yeah, do you know what? That that's going to be a that's going to be a, a real tough game, a real embarrassment. I think it's going to be an arm wrestle, and I. But I think that Wire will win one by to one to eight. A tight one. Yeah. Uh, Gary Schofield, he actually sees it KR 9 to 17. A comfortable win for KR, it has to be said. Joel sees it KR 1 to 8. He sees it a bit tighter. So too do the fans for him. They're going 1 to 8 for KR. So, you know, not an awful lot in it here. Uh, Steph, how do you see it? Yeah, um, I think. A lot of it will depend on how Hull KR reacts from the the Salford loss, um, and how, how they, you know, they take that as a team. Obviously, they're on the home patch as well, which you know, we know they're strong at home. Uh, the crowd for them is is massive there, uh, and the atmosphere and everything like that. I, I, I like the way Warrington are building. Um, I think I've said it a few times now in terms of very impressed with Burgess, how he's coming across in his press conference. They seem to be slowly building momentum, and I think people are starting to find the place. I think the halfback's going to be crucial for, for Warrington. I think getting Williams back with Hayes was massive if that, that happens. Um, but I, I'm I'm a bit more optimistic for Wire, and I'm going to go for Wire 1-8 to eight on this one. Yeah, you're going a tight one, Wire 1-8. One you can see there in the chat, Lee Partington, our new member, he's going uh, Wire 1-8. to eight. Connor Pickervance, he's gone Hulk AR 18 plus on YouTube. Good evening, Connor. Uh, Ryan Birch, 1-8 to eight for the Wire. Bit of love there for Wire. Um, I'm going Wire. Um, you know, it, it might bite me this one, but I think Warrington are just steadily building. That's what I'm seeing. Uh, I'm seeing Warrington steadily build. Uh, I think they'll go and, and improve again this week. I think they have to improve again this week. I think KR is a is a far more challenging game than Hull and Castleford at home. <laughs> go to Graven Park is always going to be tough. But I just feel... Well, I'm not laughing at you, Dave. We're laughing at Greg's comments yeah. in the chat. So. Yeah. Um, in, terms of, in terms of Wire, 9-17. I'm going to go Wire, 9-17. I think, I think this could be a game where... The likes of Vaught. I think I think the forwards are in good form. I think Harrison's in good form. I think the forwards might lay the platform. And what we're seeing about Warrington this year is when it does go out to the edges, um, they're looking quite potent. So I might be wrong when I say that, but I'm going to go the wire nine to seventeen. Uh, like I say, could be wrong, but hey, yo, there you go. Right, where are we going to go next? Uh, let's have a quick look. Where did I think we were going to go? Oh yeah, we're going to go to the uh, the game involving your team, Steph. Let's go there. The Lee Leopards taking on the Leeds Rhinos. This should be a belter. I think Kev Wall in the chat said this should be a great, great game, and I agree. It should be a great game. Lee desperately needs their first win of the season. As for the Leeds Rhinos. You know, two out of the first three and a really good, assured performance against Catalan. They will go into this game full of confidence. Last year, Leeds out the top six. Uh, Lee, Lee, obviously, we've been it. But look at that. Last season, home and away, the Lee Leopards defeated the Leeds Rhinos. In the corresponding fixture last year at the Leopards, it was 20 points to six in round 10. And that night, they were very, very good indeed with the Lee Leopards. When they went back to Headingley, it was a 13 points to six. Uh, current league position, of course, only played two games. The Leopards, they sit in ninth. Seven for Leeds just outside. Look at the odds, six to five, eight to 11 on uh, are the Leeds Rhinos. Uh, six to five, bit of value there if you're a Leeds, uh, uh, a Lee, a Lee Leopard. Uh, two losses, of course, a win, a loss and a win. Matt Moylan, uh, I picked out Matt Moylan in this one. I thought he improved dramatically in that game uh, against the Saints. And Harry Newman, how can we not be impressed by Harry Newman this week? Just gone. They're the two for me that I've picked out to watch. Um, Greg, Matt Moylan, how impressed were you uh, in defeat against Saints? Were, were you in Matt Moylan? Yeah, I thought he showed uh, he was a class player against Saints. He, 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 you know, he stood up well. 
he, he was he was he tried to be creative. I thought he was he was a, a I thought he had a decent showing. I think he's gonna. I, I think the, the the thing with Moylan is I think he's gonna grow into the game, and I think mm. you know. Given the injuries that are coming back, I think once the injuries come back, I think that will give Moylan a chance to shine. Yeah. I really do. Um, I, I think he needs maybe a couple of more games to kind of to, to stamp his authority on, on, on the team and, and to, to kind of lead them around the park a little bit more. But yeah, yeah, he, he's, all, he's, got the, he's got the potential to be one of the stars of the season. Before you go in with your prediction, let's just clear up a few things. Obviously, no Briscoe, no Asiata, no Ipape. We know yeah. about Amon is back, is my understanding for this one. Uh, he's back from, from his ban. It's going to be interesting. Uh, in fact, before Greg gives his prediction, let's jump to Steph as the inside man on Lee. Um, first of all, Leeds Rhinos. Aletsky could return for this one, is what we're hearing. No Sam Lazone still. And, of course, Bentley's out for a match because of that uh, incident with Tarek Sims at the weekend, which again is a bit of a bonus really for you, considering the players that you've got out. It's good to, to see that. And as uh, Linda Linda Bloomsman says there, to Pau May, bring them some luck. <laughs> hey, one to wait. She's going, hey, a China in your hand. Let's give it a bit of heart and soul and let's hope there's a good Valentine to go with it. Oh, I know my uh, Carol Decker. Don't you worry about that. Uh, anyway, uh, that's, how, that's how it is. Um, yes, yeah, Steph, Lee. Will this, if you were to win against Leeds first, you know, your first win was to come against Leeds at the weekend. That'd be right, Brucey, wouldn't it? Oh, absolutely. And I think, you know, Adrian Lamb has already called it in his press conference today as a must win game for us, which I was a bit surprised at that he said that, to be honest with you. Um, but I think it is a massive one for us. Um, I think with the, the Moylan point, um, I think what what we've got to remember with Moylan is he's, a, he's an NRL halfback. He's only ever played in the NRL. It's a different game over here, uh, and it takes a bit for halfbacks to to settle in. So I think he's probably settled in quicker than what I thought he would have done. Uh, but he's massive for us in this game, uh, and I think Amon coming back is massive as well. Um, I think we, we've got a very good pack. Um, and I think for them to be missing Bentley is massive for them because he's their enforcer. Um, so um, I'm expecting it to be really close. I think it's going to be a great game. It's on. I think we're the feature Sky game again, aren't we? I, yeah, think, you are. I think you are. I mean, yeah. Nicola Burton would there in the chat. She thinks it will be your first win of the season. Um, yeah. Here's an interesting point before you give your prediction. Kev Worrell. Kev, good evening to you again. Lamb's not started on fire like he did last season, I think. And it's a good point. Moylan showed glimpses in that game against Saints. But at the moment, Lachlan's just not in straps, has he? Yeah, I think, I mean, it's one of those. I think he hasn't. I think the big thing with him is he went to PNG in the off-season, so he's not had a pre-season. So he's, he basically he played them international games over in Australia. It's a bit like Saints going doing the World Club Challenge. Um, so I think he, he's, he's settling back into it. Um, I think he played all right against Saints. I don't think he had a bad game. Um, the problem is, though, Steph, he was that good last year. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, but again, we've played two games, you know, Give, give 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 us a chance to. You think, I think everybody's still finding the feet, aren't they? And hopefully, you know. Yeah, it won't be disconcerting when I said that, mate. I mean, yeah. I think by his own high standards, you know, I, yeah. I think that's the problem with Lamb. Last year he was so so good that perhaps he is playing all right. I mean, you're closer to it than me. Maybe he is playing all right, but as as a neutral watching Lee, yeah, because he's just not sparkling like we know he did last year. Maybe we're being a bit harsh on him. No, I think I think a lot of it came though off quick quick, quick rooks, and obviously not having a Pape has had a big impact on Lamb in that respect as well. Yeah. So, but now we've got Dwyer, who had, I thought was outstanding against Saints. Um, you know, uh, hopefully that that should you know get that bit of time for him. Uh, obviously, losing Asiata is another big one that's going to affect Lamb because everything that came through Asiata went to Lamb. So he's kind of on the back foot a little bit. Um, so I'm I'm quite relaxed with it at the minute, and I think he'll he'll come, we know his quality, and he'll come into his own. I think as as Moylan grows into it and takes a bit of pressure off him as well, that should only make him better. Um, Just but, uh, as the Lee man as well, you know we we know that you mentioned Dwyer there. Dwyer's coming for Pape uh, at Hooker. Uh, let's talk about the other problem areas for you: loose forward and the wing. Um, you know, no O'Brien as well. I don't think he passed his HIA, did he? Yeah. Oh, he did. Yeah. Right, so yeah. that's happy day. So O'Brien's still in there, which will allow Ardaker to remain in the, the centres. So mm -hmm. Wing, you know, first of all, who's going to play loose? That's a poison chalice. Who's playing loose forward in in, in, in um, replacement of Asias? Who would you put there and who do you expect to be on the wing? 
yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised if he pays Davis there, um, but I suspect what he may do, because we've got a bit of uh, luxury in the second row, so I suspect he will play Frankie Alton and Trout in the second row and maybe move Kai O'Donnell to 13, because yeah. uh, he's, a, he's a ball playing, you know, he's got good hands as O'Donnell, so I, I'm not. I'm not a coach. I'm not Adrian Lamb, but that's maybe what I'd do. And on the wing, um, Keenan Brand's gone out on loan to Bradford, so obviously he can't be recalled. Cause I think it's two weeks minimum on that. So I suspect he'll keep Hardacre uh, in centre rather than bring Chamberlain in at centre and move Hardacre to the wing. And I think he may give either Maya Hanley or Nisbet a run on the wing. Um, because both it'd probably be, it'd probably be Nisbet going off pre season, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I thought Hanley had a great game against Warrington in pre season as well. Um, I'd love to see him get his chance, but you know, Adrian's obviously working with him day in, day out. And it's you know, we need we've got to remember on that side as well, they're going to be marking Hanley. <laughs> so, um, I think defensive wise, that's that's what he's got to go off, um, for whoever he picks there. So that's um, maybe where Nisbet will get the, the, the shout on that one. Fair enough. And, you know, there's a, I don't know who this David Sale is uh, in, the, in the chat, but he, he, he's going on about players. Uh, oh, I know who David Sale is. He's our next Super League Raw member. Of course, that's who David Sale is. He's the one, <laughs> one thousand YouTube subscriber. David hey, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the thousand uh, YouTube subscriber got us over there. Uh, but yeah, yeah, our Dave. We look forward to seeing him pop up in the next few uh, days. Here you go, Dave, just for you. That's how you do it. WWE, <laughs> not Patreon dot com super league raw my friend uh, don't be shy don't be shy come and join the party all right greg you've had the wisdom of mr sale uh, uh -huh. of, of what he's had to say so uh -huh. go on that my friend who are you going in this one should be a belter it should be a close game um uh, and, and i think going back to the lamb thing i think probably it's a second season syndrome in super league a lot of coaches have worked him out therefore it's up to him to change his game maybe slightly and to, to do some things a little bit different he's got more he's got a new halfback partner alongside him as well remember that so you know that that little the, the partnership he had last season has been broken up they've got to learn how each other play again so that's an important thing to think about um i, I think the injuries i think the missing players for lee will cost them this weekend and I, i'm sorry steph I, i'm going for leeds 9 to 17 quite sorry. convincing Convincing in there, Steph. Yeah, you have right think... to reply, Steph. You have right to reply. And I retract my Warrington one to eight. <laughs> <laughs> the solidarity is gone. Oh, Go on, mate. Completely out the window that one, wasn't and, and it? There was the end of a wonderful relationship. Oh, dear, that's that. That's your uh, corporate ticket gone for August. Um, <laughs> um, I'll bring the wife. Go on, yeah, carry on, mate. <laughs> Mrs. Jane, you, you were already invited. It was. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> Yeah, no, I think um, uh, I, th I think it's going to be a really, really good game. It's good that we're going to have the fan experience back because the first game we didn't have respect for our uh, former life president, Brian Bowen. So I think that was, it, the last game was quite flat. There wasn't the build-up and the hype they were expecting from, you know, every game last season. So um, I think it's going to be a lot more energy in the crowd uh, for Friday's game. I believe we're putting a circus tent outside for Wilkin, for all our clowns. We've got an our team. Um, you know, Just sure he, I, I, I hope right. he's there. He's going to get absolutely annihilated when he walks out to LSV next week, Wilkin. <laughs> um, so, but anyway, I, I think that we're going to just pip this one. I'm going to leave one to eight. Right, okay, and as Kev Wall says, they thought that you were a closet wife fan. Of course, he's a closet wife fan. There's a lovely friendship built up here. We uh, we look after our own. Uh, I think I just ruined that friendship. Yeah, well, I, I'm about to absolutely completely kibosh it. Uh, but that's bad advice. Uh, do, do you know what? I, I get your point, and you know, there's a lot of love in the chat from Leopards fans. Um, I've gone Leeds one to eight, and I'm going to explain why I'm going Leeds one to eight. I think Lee might just try too hard this week. I think after two losses um, and the weight of expectation, you know, Lee last year were fantastic, absolutely fantastic with the rebrand, with the crowds, with, with everything that went around it. Th these players, they're only human. We forget that. Players are human. And even though they'll be trying their best to play it down, they will expect more themselves. The fans have started to probably expect a little bit more. And I'm just concerned that, you know, I think had they have not had the injuries, they still could have tried too hard. But I think the fact that now they've got to compensate for the injuries as well, 
that's why I'm going Leeds once away. I still think Lee will be competitive. I think it'll be really close, and I hope yeah, I'm wrong. Yeah. Houston, I really do. But I just, I just, I just fear they're going to try too hard, and that's going to force errors. And you know, unfortunately, that could cost you. Yeah. Gary, Gary Schofield, he's gone Leeds one to eight. Uh, Greg, of course, just to confirm, he's gone ninety seven. Yeah, I think it will be a close game. I, I just think injuries will take the toll. The last twenty yeah. minutes, I think Leeds will, will run away with it. Yeah. To a certain degree, not not by yeah. that much, but I think they'll, you know, it'll be a close game first sixty. But I think your injuries will 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 play a big part in this result, Steph. Yeah, I mean, it's. I, I think at, the, at this point on a Tuesday night, there's no right or wrong answer. No. We'll find out on no. Friday night. Um, but you know, I think the the only thing I'd say is, given our adversity we've had. We've played two games because we've not had the third game, obviously, against Wigan. Realistically, we'd have played that game. We'd probably looking at three losses out of three. But um, what I would say is we lost to Huddersfield by one try, which in, you know we should have been better in that game. And Huddersfield played really well. And we went to St. Allen's away, who we know are great. You know, they're the only team on six points at the moment and lost by one try. Yeah. So. Um, yeah. We, I'm not writing us off this year, oh, no. and uh, I think I think we, we've still got um, the team capable of beating Leeds. But I think that'll come down to the players, and I think how we start is going to be very important on Friday night. If we get a bit of confidence early on, we can do it. But um, I think we'll Kev, uh, Kev, 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 Wall again in the chat. Good evening again, Kev. But you know, he says the comment from Lam it's unnecessary pressure. Even without that comment, I, I think that there will be. You know, you won't say. There'd be that little bit of pressure, and like I said, it's overplaying. But the fact that Lambs now said it's a must win it adds to that pressure. Um, look, mate, you know, I hope you win it, I really do hope you win it. But I just I just think that that's why I've gone the one to eight. There, there you go. Now, there will be people, a couple of just want to clear up a few things. Yes, the competition is still coming. Stay where you are. We are going to do the draw a little bit later in the show. Uh, so stay with us. 25 pounds worth of gift vouchers that is being given away tonight. Stay with us for that. And some people might be thinking, well, where's tries of the week gone? Well, of course, it's a podcast now as well. And podcasters can't see tries of the week. So it's got a new home on a Monday. On a Monday on the news update, tries of the week will be posted. You can go over to our YouTube channel and you can see that video at your leisure. And that's great for the podcasters as well. If you want to watch Super League Raw, Team of the Week, uh, the graphics around tries of the week, all of the things that we do, Game of the Week, if you want to see all the graphics as well as everything else, go and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, once you've listened to the podcast, if you want to, you can go and take a look at the videos that actually get played during the show that you only hear as part of the podcast. Right. Okay, guys. Uh, that cleared that up nice and well, didn't it? Right. We now go to St. Helens. Uh, St. Helens taking on Salford Red Devils. Uh, outstanding what Paul Rowley has done uh, early doors. You know, everybody wrote them off at the start of the season. Uh, they've had two brilliant wins from, from, from the last two games. Mark Sneed has just been oh, just incredible. Absolutely incredible. But they are coming up against a St. Helens team that quite simply have hit the ground running. Um, no matter, you know, the amount of time Salford have gone close against Saints. I mean, look at that round 21 game last year, 18-15. They've done it year in, year out. They are, they just don't seem to get over the line again, St. Helens, Salford. It's, I don't know why that is, but they just don't. Wellsby, I mean, God, we could have put so many different players as a player to watch for, <laughs> yeah. which is the yeah. form of the team at the moment. Two to nine on. Seven to two, Salford. Now, don't get me wrong, you know, there's always a glimmer of hope. I think seven to two, especially based on the last two performances from Mark Sneed. I think he's probably quite generous, if I'm being honest, chaps. I think I think Salford, you know, have, have played really, really well. And there's a chance that North Loom is coming in for this one, which uh, yeah. you'll be, yeah. be interested to see. Matty Lee is expected to be back for Saints. Uh, Wonga Blake also. Uh, Joe Batchelor in the mix, uh, we're hearing. But Sivan and out, that's a big blow because Sivan has been playing some wonderful rugby league. Uh, of course, Parsi is a, a long-term absence. And Conrad Hall. Uh, Wonga Blake will probably replace uh, Comrade Hall in the centres, of course. Hall a match ban. Concerns for Salford. Ryan Briley, of course, pulled out ahead of the, the last game. Uh, spoke to Ollie Partington this week, um, and Ollie is not going to be playing this one. He's still a few weeks away. Uh, Ollie will be appearing as a guest and in conversation uh, in the next uh, in the next few weeks and months. So, hence the reason for that chat with Ollie. He's unlikely to be playing this week. Couple of weeks still away. Ethan Ryan, uh, of course, still out. Adam Sidlow also expected to be out, as is Joe Mellet. That's the absentees for this one. Uh, Steph, St. Helens, Salford. 
can you see an upset or are you going with the irresistible saints <laughs> well I, th I think i was i was one of the only ones that backed salford to do all right this year so i think you know again we're only round three done uh but they've they have started really well is it two wins out of three for salford two from three yeah the last two yeah last two did One. they lose two in the first round uh they lost two leads leads yeah leads yeah. away weren't it yeah yeah um <clears throat> but it, it's, it's one of those where i think so as good as, good as salford have been saints are better um having having you know seen both of them play this year i think um I, I i can't go any other way than nine to 17 for saints um i think it's two scores um uh, to saints especially at is it at saint Helens as well it is yeah yeah, yeah. so at saint, saints at home i think will be too much for them um but I, you know, I, I'd love it if they beat him. <laughs> yeah, moment. absolutely. Well, it'd be good for the, you know, and, and Saints fans don't like us saying this, but, you know, it's the same with Wigan. It's good for the comp, you know. We, yeah. It's, it's good for the comp. It's good for the competition. We had a great season last year, really close. We don't want teams running away with it. We no. want it nice and tight. Freddie McGilvery, a new Super League World member. Good evening, Freddie, sir. He says Saints 9-17, to and he says they're looking like the Saints of old, Greg. Would you agree? I think that if, if not, they're getting close to it. Um, yeah, I, I, Salford, I, I, you know, are always are always trying to over, overcome some adversity, and I, and I think people who think Saints are going to run away with this, I, I don't think Saints will run away with this. I think Salford will put a fight up, as 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 somebody's put in the as, as Greg has put in the the comment, Salford centres a, a, a decent centres, um, and I, and I think. You know they've got quite a decent pack, Salford. I'm going Saints nine to seventeen. I, I don't think it'll be the walkover that a lot of people think it's going to be. I think Salford um, in the last couple of performances have shown that they're a decent side. They've been written yeah. off, so I'm going Saints nine to seventeen. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, yeah, good point. I think. I, I, I think. You know, I said in game of the week last week for Leeds to beat Catalan, they needed to go to the edges. Yeah, you know, and they did that superbly well. And I would say exactly the same in this game. You've hit the nail on the head there, Greg. That if Salford can be exp and we know they like to be expensive. I, mean, I hope Briley's playing because I think that that changes the game. If Briley's yeah. not at full back, they just lose that coming in on the arch. He's, he's such a clever quality yeah, he, player. He, he played Ryan. well, though, didn't he? he had a good Atkin played really well, but he's no Briley, is he? No, no he's, he's no Briley. Um, but yeah, I think that 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 three quarter line. Uh, you know, Dion Cross really took his try well at the weekend. You know, Nene McDonald, Lafayette are the two biggest centres in Super League. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it's yeah. and, and ball playing centres as well. And then if uh, Noah Faluma comes in on the right hand side, I mean, there's some serious beef there on the edges. And then yeah. you, you look at the second row Sam Stone, Callum Watkins on the edges. You know, there's, there's plenty there for Saints to be concerned about. There really is. But they never seem to play well at Saints. They never seem to get a win against Saints. And Saints at the moment are in such good form. I'm in agreement with Ryan Birch, Callum uh, Calver as well. I'm going Saints 18 plus. I think Saints are going to put on a, a put on a show. And I, I hope I'm wrong. Um, you know, I hope it's closer than that. But I do think that Saints at the minute, the way they're playing, they just got strike everywhere. Um, yeah, I'm going to go Saints 18 plus. Um, as we you guy, as we Greg though, um, you know Joel, uh, the fans forum, yourself, Steph, you're all going nine to seventeen. As is Gary Schofield. I think oh, yeah. you've seen it as a, yeah. as a bit of a great score. I think I think the the you, the reason why I've gone nine to seventeen, and I think it's because of everything we've just talked about with Salford. Although I don't think Salford are going to win, I do think they're going to score points. So for the Saints to put eighteen plus on them. You're relying there on Salford really not scoring or not scoring very many. Now I can see him scoring two or three tries in this game, which means yeah. Saints are going to have to put on, you know, 30, 40 points on them to get an 18 plus. So yeah. that's my only reason why I went nine to 17. But, but Greg, Saints' defence this season has been ferocious. It has been, it has been. But, you know, as, as I think as Greg Roach just said, that they've got some big backs of Saints. Yeah. And I, I, I think, you know, I, 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 I'm with Steph. I, I think Salford will score some points. Well, I hope you're right, gents. I hope you're right. But that's how that one transpires. Right. I'll tell you what's been really interesting. There's a couple of games this week that really had me scratching my head. Which way am I going to go? And this one, 
absolutely is in that bracket. The Castleford Tigers are entertaining Huddersfield Giants on Friday night. Uh, this, for me, is was a right head-scratcher in terms of a prediction. I'd be very interested to see what those who are, are in the chat have to say about this one. I found this really hard to call. Let's just go through the tail of the tape a little bit on this one. Last year, of course, Castleford 11, the Giants 9th. They played each other three times, and all three games went the way of the Huddersfield Giants. The first game in round four was at the John Smith Stadium, 36 points to six, uh, the way of Huddersfield Giants. I think that might have been their first win of the season. Maybe, I can't quite remember. Uh, then they had a second game, again at the John Smiths, 20 points to four, a bit closer that time. And then, who can forget, round 21, when they went to the jungle and nilled the Castleford Tigers 28-0. That's history. Of course, uh, tomorrow is the future, as they say. Uh, current league position, 11 for Castleford, 8 for the Huddersfield Giants. These are the odds, 13 to 10, the Castleford Tigers, 4 to 6 on. Uh, the Huddersfield Giants, three losses in a row, but competitive losses. Uh, one win and two losses for the Giants. Again, competitive is what I would say. I thought Ennis Senior played brilliantly against us uh, throughout the game for the whole 80 minutes. I thought Senior was a handful. I have to say that we know Westerman's quality. And Elliot Wallace had to be. Ennis Senior, the ex-Huddersfield man. Elliot Wallace, the ex-Castleford man. Woo, with a great memory, Dave. Cheers for that, Joel. You're a top man. Uh, you know, I try my best for you, Chief. I try my best for you. Um, yeah, I mean, Elliot, what? I mean, there, there's the narrative right there, guys. There is the narrative right there. Any senior, Elliot, well, Elliot Wallace, that, that winger stuff that you didn't buy, um, you know, going head to, going head, to head. Uh, this should be fascinating. I, I, it's so hard to call this one. Yeah, it's, um, I think, I think the, the biggest factor in this game is going to be the pitch. Um, because obviously Huddersfield are used to playing on that great surface there. You know, Welland Road we know is is um, you know, it's a cold, it's a bit like Craven Park, proper you know, old school rugby uh, thing. And I think Castleford will, will thrive off that, especially if they can get a big crowd for this one as well. Because I think the, the home crowds have been pretty decent at Castleford this year, considering last season, you know, they've... Um, the, the thing is, so if, if the fans can get into it, I think it could be a, be a really close game. Um, but... For me in this one, I'm gonna go go with my old mate. I'm, I'm backing my mates this week. You don't know, like some people. Uh, I'm gonna go with <laughs> I'm gonna go with Joel and uh, and Freddie and the boys on on this one and uh, Ryan. So I'm gonna go nine seventeen Huddersfield. Fair enough. Uh, Jason Gary, Gary, obviously he's out. Danny Richardson should be back for this one. Paul McShane is still out. Nemo still out. Uh, George Griffin out. Uh, yeah, uh, of course, Liam Watts, I think he's still suspended for this one. I think he's, he is. I think Luke, uh, uh, Joel will be interested in, in the chat. I think Luke Yates might be returning for this one. I don't know if he's quite going to make it. Harry Rushton as well uh, should be back. Matty English out uh, after suffering concussion. He's not going to be there. Savelio still expected to be out. Joe Greenwood uh, should be in contention. And Adam Milner, of course, will miss out with a games ban in this one. I think uh, Ryan Luke should be back. Uh, yeah, Sam rushed him back. Good. Um, the, the other thing about uh, the jungle as well is it, it's a tighter pitch, isn't it? It's, it's yeah. a lot tighter. Uh, Greg Rhodes, £25 for away, adult a bit steep. Uh, he's saying 25 quid for an away adult. I mean, we had that chat. <laughs> Come we to the lessons then. <laughs> so we, had that, we had the chat, though, didn't we, about, you know, they need to probably look at travelling supporters and how they, they market that across the game. Yeah. Again, go to the Final Whistle podcast, hear what we had to say about that. Greg, did you find this a tough one to call? I did. I found it very tough. And, and I, I, watching back the, the last couple of games from the Giants and Cass, I, I thought Cass against us played well in patches. Um, and there were, there were a couple of incidents, a couple of calls I might have gone against them. Um, and I'm going to be a bit controversial here. And I'm going to upset my friends in Huddersfield. Again? <laughs> You're trying to get rid of us all here, Reggie. <laughs> it's <laughs> Huddersfield and Lee today, tomorrow the world. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go Castleford 9 to 17. And do you know what? It's just on a hunch. I think Castleford. I think they're going to turn it on. I think they're going to turn it on. And that's just on a hunch. That I think Castleford are going to win nine to seventeen. Okay, any senior on the score sheet? Then I take it. Oh yeah, just to drive the dagger home. 
Greg, Greg Roach has said I've got no friends. I know. <laughs> That's it. Greg's not even going to come on the final whistle this week. What are you doing? <laughs> Unbelievable. Shocking stuff. Absolutely shocking. Ryan Birch has no words. Ryan, Ryan, no words. can't even describe it. Um, do you know what? This this for me could go either way, gents. Either do. way. Do I don't... Giants with 18 plus. Gasco with 18 plus. I I'm think it'd be tight. I'm one of those hunches that I've got, which means... Yeah. I'm completely yeah. wrong. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I think this could be. I think it's a one to wait. To, it could be a one to wait to either way. I'm going to back Joel and the lads at Uddersfield uh, just Sorry, to guys. just try to bring a bit of equilibrium back and to keep them coming back. Um, I'm, I'm going to back Uddersfield one to eight. Um, uh, Gary Schofield sees Uddersfield nine to seventeen. Joel sees it nine to seventeen. Steph, you've said nine to seventeen. The fans form also saying one to eight. Huddersfield just Greg going cast. I do think this will be a tight game. I really, really do. And, you know, just like the Salford Castleford game, I think it's going to be intriguing. As a neutral, I think it's yeah. going to be an intriguing game. It's played going to be... on Sunday, is it? Uh, it's no, it's Saturday, Saturday, I think. It's Saturday, it's this one. Um, but yeah, I'm really looking forward to this. Way. I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be absolutely brilliant. Callum Carver, he's yeah, saying Cass. It's going to be a great game. Callum saying Cass, one to eight. Um, and Greg Roach saying it's not a good game for either side. No, it's Friday. It is. Friday night is. It's Friday night, sorry. And Joel's going to be there. Joel is going. So there you go. Part of the press. Joel is going. So when he joins us for the final whistle this week, he'll be able to give us a you know a view from a man who was in the stands. Right, let's go to, uh, to Saturday. And uh, to this one, the London Broncos taking on the champions, the Wigan Warriors. Uh, second place, 12. Current game odds, 10 to 1. <sighs> I thought that'd be a bit larger than that, from being honest. One to twenty-five on uh, Wigan. That pretty much says it all. Th three losses, two wins. James Meadows, for me, I thought he's brilliant against all. I hope he continues his progression. I think this kid um, could be, just could be, uh, remaining in Super League after the season. I think somebody will pick him up at the end of this year. And I'm also really excited because uh, rumor has it Alex Walker is going to be back for London. He was a player we picked out. Uh, in the pre-season shows. It's going to be great to see Alex Walker on the field as well. Uh, so, yeah, some really good news there with Walker coming back. Hopefully Meadows has a good game. And Jay, I picked Jay Field out as the player. I think Mr Field thus far has, has really had his moments in the opening rounds. You right there, Greg? <laughs> yeah, so he, just, so he just switched my printer on. All oh, right, fair enough. Disgraceful behaviour. Have a word, mate. Have a word. I'll pull the plug out next week. Uh, but anyway, um, yeah, uh, it's a big, it's a big one. I think um, Greg will start with you. It's got to be eighteen plus. Uh, surely. London by sixty plus, or not? That's the case, maybe. No, no. no. Suddenly, reality kicked in. Um, We're getting eighteen plus. Eighteen plus, Steph. Do you know what? It could be one of... No, it's, uh, no, it's, not, it's not going to be one of these games. Um, no, we're going to have got for... And it, that's no... I think London going to Hull and doing what they did was outstanding. Um, but it's the world champions, isn't it? Yeah. You yeah. Know, against against London, I think. The, I don't think it's going to be a massacre, though. I think they'll, they'll stick with them for a bit. And you, don't think Connor, you don't think Connor's prediction of 40-plus is, is accurate, then? Um... <clears throat> Well, it could, it could get to four, but I wouldn't say that's a ma I mean, I'm massacres. I'm talking like 70, 80s kind yeah, of I don't see thing. That. It's where it, it shouldn't be that. And it'd be interesting to see whether what the team selection is for Wigan, whether they go, they use it as a round to rest a few players, maybe. Yeah. Um, Utilize the squad. Exactly. Yeah. And bring it, not, I mean, the squad players, you know, first team players, but whether they just change things about a bit and whether he uses it to see some of those players actually play a full 80 kind of thing as well. So that's why I think it might be a bit closer than what people are expecting. But I do expect a Wigan win and probably, probably about the, in the 30 mark, I'd expect in this game. Yeah, and Fred, I think Freddie McGilvey's point, I mean, Craig Rigby there in the chat, another member uh, saying 30-plus. We know that Craig's a, a Wigging fan. Connor Pickervance got involved loads tonight. Connor, go and check out the memberships, my friend. It's great to have your company. Uh, great that you're getting involved with us. Go and check out those memberships. The The link is in the uh, on YouTube. If you check uh, in the comments, there is a link there. Go and have a look at it. Uh, we'd love you to be a part of Super League Raw, the community that we're building here. Freddie McGilvey, though, I think that's a really good point. We saw it last season, Catalan Saints and Wigging. 
points difference last year was vitally important. Saints have got off to a flyer in terms of their points difference. I think he's spot on there, Freddie McGilvery. Wigan, very professional. They will be looking to certainly match what St. Helens put on London, if not more. So yeah. that's a really yeah. good shout from Freddie. Everybody's gone 18 plus, everybody. So, uh, so yeah, uh, good luck. And I mean that, you know, good luck. I'm really impressed with the way Mike Eccles is conducting himself. Um, I wish London nothing but the best. I know we all I, do. I think if 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 London can can keep it, keep Wigan below 30, I think that's a moral victory. A good result, yeah. Like I sense, like victory. sense in the opening game. Yeah. Everyone's right in Mike Eccles' team talk for him, aren't they? Right. Oh, Everyone, yeah. Everyone's yeah. expecting him to get battered. Yeah. So... You know, that's the perfect thing for him. Show show him why you're wrong. You know. Spot on. Spot on. That, that and the, the week after when they play Warrington. Oh, you keep going on about that, dear me. Right, Saturday, right, Saturday, Catalan Dragons taking on Hull FC, bringing the curtain down. Catalan, of course, last year's second uh, Hull uh, 10. Uh, last season, uh, this corresponding fixture was round three, 38 points to six. The Dragons won that at the MKM later in the season, 28-18, the way of the Dragons as well. Fourth again, 10th this season. The odds, 1-16, to 16, the Dragons, 17-2. to two. Again, Hull FC, you know, uh, the likes of SASA is back for this one, of course. His ban has now expired, so he'll he'll be back on the park uh, for the for, for Hull FC. Uh, we know that Brad Fash is out, Joe Kate is out, um, and expect that John Lane might be a doubt as well. No Jake Truman still, so the absentee list is still pretty hefty. Uh, if you are a Hull FC fan, the positive for them though, in terms of absentees, it would appear Mike McMeekin has a slight uh, back injury, unlikely to feature in this one. Takiaho still out, no Manny Mao, no Tangai Zenon. Uh, and Mickey McElroy is still serving his suspension. Um, so a little bit of good news there if uh, if you're a Hull FC fan. I've picked out Tom Johnston in this one. It's amazing, isn't it, that Tom Johnston is yet to score in the 2024 Betfred Super League. You'd have thought that after mm -hmm. three rounds. Uh, and, of course, for me as well, Callum said it in final whistle, Jack Walker's consistency for Hull FC. It'd be a miss not to have, have put him as the player to watch. I think Jack's having a, a phenomenal start to this campaign. Um, Steph, I'll start with you this time. Uh, Hull FC going off the back of a very tight win to London. Can they back it up at Cabin? Look, remember Huddersfield last year, Huddersfield, when they went to, to Catalan, everybody wrote Huddersfield off. Everybody expected Catalan to do him and Huddersfield showed up that day. Uh, it can be done. Will it be done? No. <laughs> um, no, I think I think it's a big boost for him to get double homework back for Hull, you know, S A S A. Um it's uh, you know it's always always a thing for them as long as he can, you know, keep his cool or whatever. But I think going over to Catalan, they'll be smarting from the Leeds result. Um they'll be wanting to right a few wrongs there. Um it, it, I think this one has got more of a potential to be a cricket score than the London game. But I hope I'm wrong. Um, I hope it is closer than that. But I can't see past Catalan 18 plus in this one for me. Greg? Well, Callum said, you know, Hull 1 to 8. So, Callum, for you, Dragons 18 plus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, right across the board. I'm sorry, Callum. Look, I don't think Callum will mind. Uh, right across the board, again, unfortunately. We've all got 18 plus to Catalan Dragons. Again, we hope we're wrong. We're hoping that when we we tune in to this on Saturday, it's a proper contest because that's what the neutrals want. We want proper contest. But I think Catalan will be smarting after what was a very disappointing um, performance from them, taking nothing away from Leeds. Leeds was superb, but they will want to bounce back. Craig Rigby is saying that, Greg, you are on fire, sir. Oh, I'm fire. I tell Callum, if Hull win one to eight, Dave will buy you a pint the next time we play Hull. Absolutely. I'm buying too. I'm that confident. Uh, but anyway, that's uh, that's by the by. Look, there you go. Absolutely. That That's the way we see round number four. Right, let's get into the chat. Earlier on this evening, uh, we showed you the Super League Raw team of the month for the month of February. This was that team. Jack Wellsby at fullback. Tommy making some wing as long with Ash Handley. Nanny McDonald lesson masters in the centre. Mikey Lewis at standoff. Scrum out Jordan Apple. Chris Satai and Paul Vaughan as the props. Darrell Clark Hooker. Second row, Matt Whitley, Tarek Sims. And loose forward, Elliot Minchella. Getting your chat of those players. Who do you think was the February 
player of the month. And whilst you're getting that in the chat, come on, don't be shy. I'm going to go to Greg first. Greg, of that 1 to 13, it has to be the 1 to 13, of course, because the, uh, the interchange doesn't count in terms of a player of the month. Who, from that 1 to 13, would you give uh, the February player of the month to from a Greg Nixon perspective? For me, it has to be between Mikey Lewis, Daryl Clark and Matt Whitley. Right, OK. And do you know what? I'm going to go with Daryl Clark. So you're giving it to the ex-wire man, Daryl Clark. Who'd have thought oh, that? Darryl Unbelievable. Clark. There you go. Uh, over to over to Steph. Uh, where do you see it? This, this was the first two rounds, wasn't it? First two rounds only, yeah. Um, I, I would personally have gone for Whitley, but I think Abdul had a great two first two rounds, so I'm going to say Jordan Abdul. Right. Okay. Well, in the chat, uh, Greg Roach has gone uh, Darrell Clark. Uh, Freddie McGilvery has gone Essen Masters. There's a surprise. You'd have <laughs> from Freddie. Uh, Connor Pickervance, uh, he's gone with Chris Satai, um, which is interesting. Ryan Birch, Jack Wellsby and Matt Whitley, he's going with. Paul Vaughan from Kev Wobble, who'd have thought that? From Kev. Uh, unbelievable. <laughs> uh, right. Should we uh, Should we find out who Super League Raw have given it to? Go on. Yeah, this is going to upset a few people going off the chat. Anyway, here we go. Let's uh, let's get to it. Here it comes. So there you go. The Super League Raw Player of the Month for February has gone the way of Ash Handley of the Leeds Rhinos. Um, yes, they only won the one game, but sparkling form. Three tries, four tackle busts, one break, 27 carries, 364 metres, 13.4 average. Handley has been, well, I mean, that try there that we just showed uh, in the in the clip, the in and the out. He scored another one of those the week after. He has been absolutely incredible as a winger in the first two games. Didn't play bad this week either. So, yeah, sorry to everybody. Nobody gave... It's interesting. It's all about opinions. Nobody in the chat went away about Stanley. Uh, but that's the way I saw it. I've gone with Ash. Um, thoughts, gents? Um, I can't believe I didn't call that. <laughs> I've, I've probably been his biggest bigger upper. Well, <laughs> you know? I was really surprised when you didn't go it. I know. I, 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 do you know what? I think I just uh, saw Abdul, you know, with his first two performance and got a bit sidetracked with that. But yeah, no, it's a great, great shout. I mean, he's already got a highlight reel already this season, hasn't he? In Incredible. terms of um, you know, some which I think any player would be proud of. So yeah. well, well, there's uh, Mr. Hanley, and you better not score one of those on Friday night. Absolutely not. Right, Greg, yourself? Anybody can score a 90-yard try, can't they? Come on. Absolutely. <laughs> no, fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, yeah. Right, uh, like, right, last few bits and pieces to get through before we call time on another brilliant, brilliant night of sport in chat and banter. Uh, yes, it'd be a miss of us not to go to the Prediction League. Apologies, I didn't do this earlier. Gary Schofield, he's back in pole position. I mean, won it last year. 51 points for him. The fans form and myself up to 47. Joel has dropped from his... Uh, from his throne, he's down to 46. Steph and Greg both on 45. It is all to play for to confirm. That's how the round four predictions, the locked in, Schofield, Joel and the fans form going KR, myself, Greg and Steph going the wire. Everybody going the way of Saints. Four of us going the Rhinos, the fans forum and Steph going Lee Leopards. Only Greg going for the Casford Tigers, the rest going Huddersfield. And it's an absolute shoe in for the Wigan Warriors and the Catalan Dragons this week that's the way it's gonna go right let's just do a few, a few final reminders coming up this wednesday the fan the membership have already had the opportunity of watching it for over nearly a week the mike mcmeekin in conversation will be uploaded tomorrow to youtube and to the podcast at 8 p.m you can hear what mike mcmeekin had to say about his career his time at the catalan dragons his hopes for this season and he also talks in glowing terms about his previous clubs 
as well. That is one not to be missed. That's tomorrow at eight o'clock. The news, of course, will return on Thursday, uh, as it always as it always does. Uh, you have got till midnight, Wednesday to over to Thursday. So at midnight on Thursday morning, that's Wednesday to Thursday, not Thursday to Friday. You have to have joined the membership to win a 2025 season ticket. If you want, if you've got a team in the fantasy league then you need to be becoming a member and get yourselves involved in this ace 2025 season ticket. Yes, there's a free competition for a free shirt like there were last year. And of course, second place in the membership will also get a free shirt. More prizes will be announced to members as the season goes on and more sponsorships come on. So you really do need to be involved in this. To confirm, the quiz night, the first quiz night is penciled in monday the 15th of april 7 30 p.m on zoom you will be sent a link it will be advertised everybody's welcome how well do you know your rugby league it will be interactive you'll be playing on your phones i'll be compare for the evening we'll have the league tables up it's going to be a great bit of fun that do get involved everybody's invited but from may this will be exclusive to Super League Raw members, but come and have a sample of the great fun that they're going to be having over the course of the year. And again, more things are coming thick and fast here at Super League Raw for the rest of the season. Right then, gentlemen, the time has come. We are giving away £25 of gift vouchers for your club shop. That's what we're doing. Now, the last time we shared a screen here at Super League Raw, we got a bit of feedback. So I'm hoping that that's not going to be the case, but it's the only way I can do this draw. Okay, so here we go. Let's get this uh, the screen shared. Okay. <laughs> Gentlemen, you're going to throw me out. Can you see the wheel? Gentlemen, can you see the wheel? No. No. You can now, we, we, hopefully. Yes. yes. There you go. As you can see, ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, there are all the names. I've shuffled once. I've shuffled twice. I've shuffled three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We're now going to hide it. I haven't got a clue who is going to win this. Here it comes. £25 of ticket of tickets, of £25 of vouchers for your team. Best of luck, everybody. Here we go. And it's David Liverland. David Liverland is the man who has got the £25 vouchers. Congratulations to David. He, David, I know, I think David's on YouTube. Dave, you need to just uh, send me a private message. We'll uh, exchange you. I'll get your address. And we'll be sending you those vouchers. Congratulations. Well, do, David. Support? do we know who he supports? I don't. I don't know who David supports. But it could, uh, could double Salford's uh, income, that, on the club shop. Possibly. <laughs> possibly. Yeah, you, you, you might be right. There you go. I'm, I'm back. I'm back. So, yeah, congratulations. So, yeah, massive, massive congratulations to David. Uh, great effort there. So, yeah, there you go. That's Super League Raw Weekly for another week. We hope you've enjoyed it. We've enjoyed it. Uh, as always, we're going to go out with the top performers up to round number three. Uh, but, gentlemen, really enjoyed your company. Yeah, it's been I think Greg coming there is brilliant there. Reggie could use that wheel for his predictions. <laughs> That's it now, sir. <laughs> Who said that? Greg Roach. <laughs> right. That's your Christmas card list. Uh, come into the night there, Greg. Come into the night. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. More competitions on the way at Super League Raw. But, gentlemen, I'm going to wish you good night. The top performers are on the way. We will be back 8 o'clock next Tuesday for more Super League Raw Weekly. Who's saying it? You can't beat a bit of weekly. You can't, you can't beat, beat a, bit a, bit a weekly. We'll see you next week, guys. All the best. See you later, guys. Bye. After three rounds, here are the top performers in the 2024 Betfred Super League. Leading the try scoring chart are Ash Handley of the Leeds Rhinos and Liam Marshall of the Wigan Warriors, both with five. The top try assister is Mr. Mark Sneed of Salford Red Devils, a impressive both with ball in hand and off the boots. The most meters continues to be made by Ash Handley of the Leeds Rhinos, now up to 526. The top tackle buster in Super League is Harry Newman of the Leeds Rhinos with 20-14 against the Catalan Dragons this weekend. 
for clean breaks. You can't look past Matty Ashton of the Warrington Wolves or Liam Marshall of the Wiggy Warriors, both with five. Offloading is an art form, and Hakeem Maloudi and Liggy Sal lead the charge with 10 apiece. The heartbeat of Baker of Super League this year is Chris Satai of the Catalan Dragons, 408 in the first three rounds. The most tackles in Super League has been made by John Lane of Hull FC with 137. And finally, the most goal kicks thus far goes to Mark Sneed of the Salford Red Devils with 13. Those were the top performers in Super League for the season thus far.